Welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. Now, today is the entertainment podcast. We've got the water cooler chat, everyone's favorite, Braden Cox's stories of the week. We've got some dating segment. Oh, you best believe there's some interesting stuff coming up in there. Yours truly decided to download Hinge over the weekend. So we're going to go into that. And we also have a fan stories on the voicemail coming up. It is all in this episode starting now. All right, let's kick it off, starting with Braden Cox. Welcome to the podcast, mate. Oh, g'day, mate. So uh, oh, yes. I've been sitting here and I'm dying for you to tell <laughs> people this story because you told me about it and you you just broke it to me subtly when we were out shooting the other day. Mm. And as serious as it is, it's hilarious. It's, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's, it's bloody hilarious. You've had some eye issues yep. over the journey. Mm -hmm. People know about it, but you've had uh, a new incident. Can you tell, yes. take us through it? Now, I went to the doctor, a little checkup, right? A little checkup. And the doctor was like, hey, Mason, you've got a stitch in your eye that we need to pull out. It's just worked its way to the surface. And this, I must say, this doctor, right, he's about five foot four, five foot five. He's, he's, a, he's a smaller human, right? right? And I'm a massive human, right? And he, he goes and he pokes at my eye and he pulls the stitch out and I start getting lightheaded. And like anyone that's ever passed out gets lightheaded, it goes red, then it goes bang, black, you're out. And the next thing I know is I, I wake up to this little doctor holding his legs, <laughs> holding my legs above his head, trying to get the blood to flow back to my heart. He goes, Mason, you've just passed out. And I was like, holy shit, man. Yeah, I did. That was wild, dude. I was like, that's just crazy. Anyway, so yeah, that happened. I saw my life flash before my eyes. I didn't know if I was going to wake back up from getting an eye or a stitch out of my eye. And um, here we are today. I'm still alive, still kicking, but um, almost almost cacked it over the weekend. I've got a couple. It's a, it's a two-parter. So stitch in your eye. I don't even... Mm. How you know? How's that all work? Like a, like a stitch, like when you cut your hand, you get a stitch in your hand? Yep. Exact same thing. But it's like, so whenever you have a stitch, sometimes it'll work its way to the surface. Apparently the same thing happened from cataract surgery. It was the last eye surgery I had, major one. And a stitch had come up to the eye and it was kind of scratched my eyelid, but I didn't really think anything of it. And then he kind of pulled it out. And the last thing I kind of really remember is him just like putting this little pocket thing and putting the stitch in there. And then it was just like, went from that to just blackout. And I woke up with this little man holding my humongous trunks above his like head going, Oh my gosh, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm good, man. I think I passed out. <laughs> sure, you hope it's not like a roofie or something. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the, the doctor I have is a, is a great man. I would never talk any ill will about him. He's, so, he's fixed my eyes. He's, he's giving me a sense back, which is pretty crazy to say. So when you were under, you didn't, did you see a light? Did you see maybe another oh. life? Did you see you're holding up the flag? You got the premiership? Did you see... What did you see in that in that moment? I dreamt about us talking about Benifer, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't even remember. It was just like a flashlight. It was one of those like a million ideas came into your head at once. And then all of a sudden you like come out of it. Like whenever you come out of a dream and you're like, what did I just dream about again? I don't even remember. And then I was like, oh, okay, like I, I'm i alive still. Okay, that's good. I'm not living in a matrix, I don't think. Like we're, we're back into the real world. That's good. It's a, yeah. uh, I'll tell you about a story that I had that is nothing like that. But what do you similar. got for me? So oh when I, these are always good. When I was, a, can I can I just preface this? Last time you kind of told one of these stories, I feel like was you going to hospital for essentially what was it? You had something to your nut. Had, <laughs> one of your testicles was a bit swollen. I had some, I had some dramas. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> no, this one was much more innocent. But I was at school and um, a palm. So we had all these palm trees at our school. Yeah. School in the country, country life. And one of the palm fronds had fallen down, which is like the branches on a palm, palm leaves, tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were playing with it. And the teacher came over and said, don't be playing yeah. with the palm fronds, which is, you know. Spiky. So I was playing with the palm frond because no one tells me what to do. I'm a bad boy rebel without Oy. a cause. Hey, and hey, uh, hey. yeah, I was seesawing on this palm frond and it stabbed me in the leg. Like one of these barbs like stabbed me in your the leg. leg. Yeah. So I went Whoa. to the nurse's office. She's looking around in there with a little torch and stuff. She says, nah, you're all right. Get back out there, champion. Um, and it was like months later, like three to six months later, I was sitting in a mate's house and it had healed over. But when I was sitting down, there was like a little thing underneath my skin, like poking oh. out this to this point. So oh, I went no. to the hospital and um, they cut open my leg and pulled out this palm from oh. that had been in my leg under my skin for, you know, three or six months. What? And um, they were saying- 
They all came over and took photos with me holding this palm frond, doing oh the thumbs up gosh. and stuff. And uh, yeah, they were like, oh, you're really lucky because if normally the way that it works is like that stuff works its way through to your bloodstream. And then if, your, if a I, palm frond yeah. like goes through your bloodstream to your heart, you're not you're not in the best nick. So, oh, yeah, so, lesson in all this, listen to your teachers. They uh, Don't listen to the nurse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was, uh, anyway, so that was my little story, but nowhere near as, you know, your eyes are important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't don't, don't want to be messing with those. Don't go messing with Getting those. Getting squeezers and someone pushing and like prodding a stitch out, not the greatest thing you probably want. And but a, a few times lately, every time I look at you, you Left eye is just, it's got a, it's got a little twinkle to it's it, got it, a it? sheen it's got a little to it. shimmer. Yeah. A little shimmer, Brayden. Yeah, it's good for the hinge profile, which we'll talk about later. Oh, so, yes. So, uh, speaking of, let's jump straight into the water cooler chat because we've been aching oh, for it. My golly. <laughs> Things have, oh, everyone's been asking about it. Everyone's gone, mate, I've got nothing to talk about at work. I'm waiting for this water cooler chat. So, without ado, further ado, we're going to get into it because there's some big things happening in Australia right now. Ed Sheeran and Harry Styles are making panties drop all over <laughs> Australia. I'm telling you, women are just going nuts for these two. They are absolutely crazy. I'm telling you, 99% of fans of these two guys got to be women. If we need to find a girlfriend, I feel like we just need to buy Harry Styles tickets or Ed Sheeran tickets for their next oh, concert. Is that it? I thought you were going to say we're going to learn how to play the guitar and sing. Nah, that um, takes way too much effort. <laughs> it's such <laughs> a way. No way. Concert. I don't mind that tactic. But um, no, I think... If Ed's dragging him in, I reckon mm. we got hope. Because um, Ed is giving hope to a lot of men out there. He's very, very talented. And I have been Super to an talented. Ed Sheeran concert. And uh, it was very good. Like, the way that he can control an audience with just him and his guitar, it's it's quite impressive. Yeah. But at the same time, he is a little ranger. So it does. Is that allowed to say that now? You need to point that out. <laughs> he, uh, he is giving us all hope. Uh, Harry Styles, on the other hand, I don't think his songs are great, but he's the opposite. Yeah. He he has the looks, which, he does he, have which the looks. you can't really Oof. argue with, can you? He's like the new John Mayer of our generation. Oh, my God. I don't get John Mayer. I don't understand. Is that... Uh, what am I missing there? Uh, John Mayer, Body is a Wonderland. <laughs> he Four. seems so pretentious. Mate. Yeah, but sing, absolute... <laughs> God of a voice, and he's a guitar like can play guitar crazy well. Yeah, he's yeah. got everything a woman wants. I he's one like, of those but, people. Do you reckon when you go camping or whatever, it's like, oh, actually, I did, I did pack my guitar. I must have yeah, yeah, yeah. forgot to take it out of the car. <laughs> Who would have guessed? I've actually got it in my back pocket here. <laughs> I'm ready and prepped. It's already tuned. Yeah, uh, but, uh, but yeah, they're they're in town, mate. And there's some crazy things happening. Some women have actually slept overnight just to be able to get his merchandise. Like it's these people are gone absolutely crazy. The boas, like the little feathered boas, have actually gone to the point where they're sold out in Melbourne. Sold out of the feather sold boas. out of feathered boas. Like, like Hulk Hogan style. Hulk, yes, Hulk. And <laughs> see, so yeah, the feather bow has got different meaning to us, I feel like, than the old yeah. uh, the ladies of today with Harry Styles. But they're sold out, man. I'm telling you, these people, them two, have just gone and made Australia absolutely stir crazy at the moment. Just absolutely nuts for these people. And I uh, love this time of year. You got the Harry Styles, you got the Ed Sheeran, you got the Chili Peppers, Post Malone. We're happening. just, oh, we're bubbling. Mm. We're just bubbling away. It's Post Malone, like, I mean, we we putting him up there with Harry Styles and Ed Sheeran? I think he's more of a hit with the dudes. Ooh. Like he's like, I, I would love to you, hang out with Posty, yeah, drink true. shoes, Girls smoke like the, the bad boy though. Oh, bad boy, I'm telling you. That's, Posty. I mean, it's not working right, for me. I'm about, bad as, I'm about as bad as you can get over this. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I once had a palm tree <laughs> leaf in my leg. What well, about that PR? I got to get my PR The up. PR. Well, yeah. from one artist to another, we have some Iggy Azalea news. and A great Australian? Great Australian. One of the best. Talks and now Perth you twang? can find her on OnlyFans, I apparently. Like that. That's I like that. She's um she's going to, I'll let you kind of take over from here because I think there's some language in here that might be needed to be censored. So if you have children in the car, just be aware that this might need to turn the volume down a little bit. Not safe for work, this one, which is big cock steps in and I'll, I'll just cover <laughs> this one, mate. You sit there and just relax, mate. So um, Iggy's... Uh, come out and said how she's making most of her cheddar off this OnlyFans. And you'd think it would, you know, the traditional way. The, Some good money on there. The, the way that they've been doing it forever, you know. You mm. just, bit of bit of skin, bit of photos, bit of videos, you know. Yeah. That's I'll leave it at that. Use your imagination. But yeah. no, most of these people are getting the real serious bucks through the messages. 
Yeah. And it's not just the you know you're not your typical sexting messages, not your not your saucy stuff. This is this is it's verging on the weird. So creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> creepy vibes. So Can't see this. Iggy's saying that she's getting a lot of uh, messages from men who are willing to give her big bucks mm. to say weird shit like like you're a piece of shit and. Uh, <laughs> It's a lot of um, degrading stuff, a lot of- um, And they're asking her to say this to them. Yeah, so they're willing to pay. It says $600 here. I don't really want to say the sentence out loud. <laughs> but I, I'll, I'll give them names. It's like, I'd never S that disgusting little effing D if yep. um, you can decode that. So um, yeah, she, she gets a lot of these weird messages from guys. But hey, I'd be happy to just insult people for cash. That sounds like yeah. fun. I'll degrade people for cash. No worries. What about you? I, uh, what about I you, mean, there's Mason? a price for everything, Brayden. <laughs> there's a price for everything. Don't you forget about that. I don't know if my mom really needs to know what OnlyFans is or see me on there. But um, yeah, interesting. Interesting. I mean, I think it makes me feel a bit better about my life because I know there's creepier and weirder people out there that I will never reach that level of, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it just makes me feel a little better about me being single and just uh, doing my own thing. If it, these are the people we're competing with. Surely we're, we're ahead of these guys Surely. in the race. <laughs> we're not that weird. We can we can get past these guys. I reckon uh, if it's them, then us. Them, then us. <laughs> There's not much of a gap between the two, mate. Man. Oh, gosh. Yeah, but um, it actually, there is a bigger creep right here in Melbourne. <laughs> yes, actually- I mean, we need to get into this one. This one is insane. Go ahead. This it's- is a wild one. It's $70. Wow. Yeah, this is an ad to put up for uh, accommodation in Melbourne. And let me start off. This is a great deal. You're not going to see another deal, anything like this. Melbourne accommodation in the CBD. $70 for the entire week. Wow. What would you- <laughs> Mate, housing Wait. prices don't matter. You get $70 a week. $10 a day. That's quick math. But I, where's the downside? Where's the downside? Well, <laughs> I can tell you the downside. Uh, it says this in the ad. Uh, I'll, I'll read the whole thing because it's it's quite inviting. It's like Bunnings. If you find a better price, we'll beat it by 10%. <laughs> so, so this, this is the sales pitch. If you're coming from an international flight, interstate, or living out in the suburbs and just don't want to go all the way home after a long day's work, I can offer you this. I have a one-bedroom apartment at the bottom of the CBD near Southern Cross Station with nice views overlooking South Bank, Port Phillip Bay, and the southeastern suburbs. The apartment is fully furnished, so all you need is your suitcase and Mm. $10 a night. That sounds great, doesn't it? That sounds like a great deal. That's- Yep. Sold. He's basically giving it away. But there is one catch. The only catch is there's only (laughs) one bed. So we would need to share. (laughs) I'm a a 36-year-old Australian man with a professional job. He's decent, respectful of others- and he's got a fit body. That's where it goes wrong. That's where it goes wrong. That's it was, where it goes it wrong. It was creepy, but it got really weird whenever you added the fit body at the end of it. See, like, I think you're you're going a bit hard on him because he says that he's decent and respectful. So, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe it's a real uh, head to foot arrangement. I was just about to say, is it head to t- <laughs> touch the area? Like, I mean, if I'm sleeping in the same bed, he's not getting much room on that bed. So, and I think he's only brought up that he has a fit body because he he's just saying that he's not going to be taking up much bedroom so he's saying that you're getting a lot of bedroom he's a decent kind well-respected bo- uh bloke with a professional job i don't know what that has to do with anything but 10 bucks i mean i'd look past a lot <laughs> <laughs> it's 10 bucks a night <laughs> like we said earlier hey everything's got a price on it there's a price for everything. <laughs> 70 bucks is a bloody good price. It's a damn good deal. I'd be pitching the couch when I first got there, and then I'd read him off that. If but he goes like, no, 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 in the bed. If this works, good Lord. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Got to start thinking of this. Oh, is that say posted by Braden Cox? <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. We're moving on, it. moving on. <laughs> moving on, moving on, moving on. It's been a while, but we need to jump into some of these weird news stories, Mace, because they've been just yes. piling up. They've been bubbling up. They send them to me. The CNNs of the world. The FloridaMan.com.au. Now, jumping into this one, because this is a ripper. Man ran out of gas. Tells police his vehicle was shot at on the I-94 to get a quicker response. Too bad it wasn't true. 
Uh. Police say the investigation revealed a female passenger in the vehicle who called state police twice trying to get a response, but nada. Mm. So they called back and said, there's a white man in a purple shirt shooting around an AK-47. So the cops hightailed it out. If you ask me, that's smart. (laughs) Up until this point, smart. Yep. It takes a bit of a twist. We're smarter, not harder. Because she gets pretty <laughs> dumb after this. Uh, <laughs> the troopers arrived at the scene and discovered that no one was injured and the vehicle hadn't been shot. So they lied. Yeah, okay. But you got to do what it you got to do to get attention. Got to get them out there. Yeah. Troopers investigated and they found out the driver had a suspended license and oh was driving gosh. while impaired. The man was arrested <laughs> while intoxicated and he also had fugitive warrants. <laughs> oh. oh gosh I mean I looked at the title I'm looking at this right now and it says Detroit and this doesn't describe Detroit better than I've ever seen it before Detroit is one of those places one guns very prevalent in Detroit crime very prevalent in Detroit I actually think if you call the cops and told them there was a shooting you'd have a less of a chance of cops showing up in Detroit than actually just saying you ran out of gas um, it's hilarious it's kind of smart until he had all the different warrants and stuff on him and he's now going to jail for lying. To, I don't even know if that's like a, I mean, like uh, not respecting authority of like calling the cops for like a fake reason. Is that even a law? I'm not really yeah, sure, but um, surely that's not a great start. Like it's good, smart thinking on some kind of level to get police there by going like, I oh, know, because there's the old thing. It's like, if you scream, help, 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 no one's going to come help. But if you scream fire, mm. people are more willing to come and True. lend a hand. So they've kind of adopted that theory, but I don't know. If you got warrants, Once again, you probably don't call idea. the police Terrible on yourself. Terrible execution. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. We'll finish off with this one because this one, I don't know. It's just the stuff of nightmares. Yeah. Residential care facility faces $10,000 fine after Iowa funeral director finds woman pronounced dead gasping for air in a body bag. Oh, my gosh. Stuff of nightmares. So bad. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Yeah, it had it had me too. Because I know, like, some people aren't good with claustrophobia. Man, that, that is seriously, that's like the worst way. <laughs> like one suffocating, two in a dark bag, three probably getting buried soon. So the way this happened, six a.m. Sixty-six year old resident one because they didn't resident na- one. <laughs> they didn't name her because John Doe. Yeah, uh, her mouth was open, her eyes were fixed, and there was no breathing sounds. Uh, the nurse was unable to locate resident one's uh, pulse with her stethoscope. She placed her hand on her abdomen and there was no movement. All the classic signs are dead, right? Yep. <laughs> Contacted the family, said, hey, look. Oh, I didn't even think about this. Yeah. Nana's dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll meet you at the funeral home. Then at 8.30. So this has all happened in a two and a half hour period. Phenomenal. The funeral home staff unzipped the bag and observed resident one's chest moving oh as she gasped for air in the funeral home called 911. So she's been in this bag for two and a half hours. <laughs> oh, what's, you can't laugh at this, Brian. This is a serious thing. A lady almost died. No, well, she did for a little bit. <laughs> did she, though? She died a little. We're not a hundred percent certain. <laughs> it's it's detail. It's semantics, oh really. Gosh, but gosh, so I just couldn't think of anything worse. Different levels of sleep with some people. <laughs> not breathing, just eyes open, no movement, just just having a nap. Leave me alone. <laughs> put, put me in a bag, Jesus. <laughs> you would think a noise or something would be made. Just they, a they very, put her into very a bag. Heavy sleeper. They put her into a bag and she didn't wake Lord. up. Lord, she, you know, she's either. Very heavy sleeper. Or she was a little dead. Just a little dead. Um, but good news, she's back. She's, she's kicking. Back. I think she was um, seen playing tennis uh, not long after at 9.30, three and a half hours <laughs> later. She's out there. She's uh, had a rest. She's ready to go. Yeah, she's <laughs> ready to there. attack the day. In the funeral home, the Iowa Bowls team. I reckon she's <laughs> clean enough. <laughs> Steve played pickleball. Uh, but that's that's all we got oh, for the uh, news stories. I'm great. glad it's to great. be back. It's great to see you back. It's great to see you back. We've got some iconic things, the water cooler chat and the news stories from here. They're, they're back in full swing. But it's not what everyone, everyone's hanging out 
for our mm. most popular segment. To make them feel just better about their own lives. We pump everyone up by uh, just digging ourselves holes. Just putting our own selves in a body bag. <laughs> of course, we are talking about the dating segment. We did put it out there uh, to get some voicemails. Yes. People delivered. These are some uh, bad dates from some of the listeners. Let's fan feedback. Let's jump straight in. How's it going, Cocko and Coxie? It's the Dazzler here. So I met this lady through work, really enjoyed working together, and she wanted my number to go on a date. The day came around, organized this restaurant, bang, got stood up. Did not hear from her for two or three days. My next shift when I seen her, she was like, oh, I'm so sorry, like I had things pop up. So I thought, okay, yeah, sweet. That's all right. She was the one that instigated to have a second date. The day came around, did not hear from her, got stood up again. Like every shift I'll see her, she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, things came up. And she'd always hug me and say, oh, I really enjoy working with you. You make my day so much better. And in the end, this gets bad. I kept hoping, but she stood me up eight times. Yep, <laughs> eight times. I should have given up after two. Uh, okay, we, sh- we shouldn't laugh. We shouldn't laugh at that. Mate, it's, it's not <laughs> such a hit. <laughs> Dazzler. Dazzler, eight the whole work element really just... Oh, that's that's audacious by her, knowing she's going to have to see him the next day. I said last week that my date was a bit of a head fuck, but Dazzler, eight times, mate. Dazzler, get the hint, mate. Yeah. Get uh, the hint. You got to move on. You, you're better than that. Uh, you deserve better. <laughs> Maybe get out of work. Get out of the workplace. Let this one go. I hope there's not a ninth, a tenth, a eleventh. Oh, <laughs> let it go. I hope you I let it go. I was going through his head at four or five. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, one oh, more. No. Oh, oh, she's a nice lady. <laughs> no, he was saying I, I trimmed some of these down, but he was saying he was batting well above. So okay. sometimes well, we've all been there. Sometimes you, you know, go above and beyond for you know the unicorn that you know you'll never get. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I reckon let her go. If you haven't let her go after the eight times, you've um, let's, actually no. Let's see. Go to double digits, Daz. <laughs> let's, yeah, that's- see, let's see if we could break the record for how many times you've been stood up by one human. You've come this far. <laughs> You're almost there. Don't let her break your will, We're mate. Past the point of no return. You can outlast her, son. <laughs> Don't let her get in your head. <laughs> There's still a chance. All right, let's jump into another. Oh my god, do I have a story for you? Recently, met a guy on Hinge. So on this date, at some point, he asked me my body count, and I was, I was honest. And then I asked him his body count and he was like, oh yeah, I'm a virgin. And I was really shocked. And he's like, oh, I don't know why you're shocked. I'm like, well, because you're older than me. I expected that. So by the end of this date, he's professing his love for me. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is very awkward. But I'm very horny as well. And he was very horny. So went to back to his place, fooled around a little bit and it was awful. So by the end of it, he was like, yeah, I don't know where I see this going. And I was like, you know what? You take your time and you think about it. Over the course of a few days, he's sending me inappropriate text messages and monologues worth of reasons why we should be fuck buddies. And I said no. Like, what the fuck? Okay, so there's there's so much to dissect here. There's a bit to unpack. Let me me jump through a bit of this. First of all, can we start body count? Wild to ask that on a date. Never ask the body count. I think it was more because he's got to be self-conscious about his position, right? Yeah, okay. Can't understand that. I yep. will jump off the top and say, nothing wrong with being a virgin. Mm-hmm. You all, we all start there. Yep. Um, so I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, we've all been in those awkward situations. If our parents so. are listening, still virgins us too. Yeah, 100%. Don't say. I haven't even seen a boob before. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <Steven> breastfed. <laughs> I get that you're both horny. But maybe stick, <laughs> just try and stick to people on the same experience level. You don't see Mace going running around in the under 16s. He's, he's, he plays AFL. He, he messes with AFL guys. It's, no, not this in that way. Just, no, I'm trying to, make, I'm trying to make a, <laughs> trying to make a metaphor here. No, keep going. Keep uh, going, bro. It's going great. Mess with people in your own experience level. That's what I will say. Or if, if he does come out and say he's a virgin, help him through it. You've got the experience there. You should be the confident one. Help him through this experience. Talk him through. Mm. It's all about communication. Communication is key, Mace. 
Out of all the stuff he just said, that's the only thing I could... I think I saved it. Unimic <laughs> he saved it. He saved it. Communication is key. Well, hey, we'll cut the rest out. Communication is key. That is the important thing in these situations. And look, I understand they're both trying to communicate, but it's a bit of tiptoeing around because it's a bit of an awkward thing, I guess, in his scenario because of the way the world works. But to ask the body count and then come back and go zero and I mean like in asking her first she would feel terrible whenever he goes zero after she said whatever the number is yeah. like that's a oh man you just feel like a bit of an ass or like just a bit of a you know like I don't know just on a different level maybe if he's asked it because he's insecure about he, himself being a virgin mm. he's really setting himself up there I'd rather just get into the fact that that yep, you're a virgin off the top. Don't be like, oh, 110. Yeah. Good numbers. <laughs> Good numbers. Good numbers. I'm just, <laughs> Batting well. I haven't got off. The, I haven't left the crease yet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you've turned up. You hit the century. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. There's a bit to work through there, guys, but I hope the communication. I reckon. Communication is key. That's what we got out of it. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got there. All right. Thanks for sending in your voicemails. Loved hearing from you. Keep them coming. Yes. Link in the bio. Brayden, I've dived into your life a little bit. I want to get a bit of an understanding. So I have done the unthinkable. I've downloaded the big, I don't even want to give it a word because we don't have a sponsor for this dating podcast yet. And we're looking to get them. It rhymes with binge, binge and cringe. Um, this dating app I have downloaded, I've done a bit of research, chunked a few photos up and I've learned a few things about the dating world, Brayden. And you've talked about this app. You've talked about going on dates from this app. I've got like a top five or top six or seven things I've learned, right? It's about two weeks, three weeks on the app, whatever it is, done a bit of R and D research. And I've come to the realization of the females on here that I've seen every girl has at least one dog photo. That's Check. a guarantee. Check. Am I correct? You can, you can, you can, yeah, you can double check these, right? Yeah. Every girl has at least one festival photo or a photo of her in a bikini showing her body. Yeah, absolutely. Check. A lot of girls will do the little photo of the cheeky bum shot. You know, just a little, little, little ass out showing a little, little bit of skin, right? The uh, look back over the They'll shoulder. look back the over the shoulder. And all I can think is, who's taking the photo? Uh, friends look after friends. Friends look after friends. Well, maybe we need to add that to our profile. Who knows? Um, <laughs> every girl in there, I feel like, has something that says, um, you have to be okay with subtle bullying. Yeah. Aussie that's... girls are ruthless. Cheeky Just banter. ruthless. Cheeky banter or subtle bullying, I feel like, is a very attractive thing for women in this country. But people always put, oh, they got to have some cheeky banter. And then you like launch into this cheeky banter and they're like, how was your weekend? Is the weather good today? <laughs> beep, boop, 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 beep, bop, beep, bop. Bop. What if you're more attracted to the friend than the person that's actually popped up on the actual app? How do you approach that? I have thought this a lot of times because it'll be you'll match thinking that you're swiping the friend and then you'll find out that it's the other person in the picture. There is no way that you can really be like, hey, um, don't know how to say this, but I thought you were your friend. Is there any way that you could pass me on to her? It's kind of on you. If you're posting a picture and you're the- oh, it's their fault. You're less attractive oh, than your friend that you're crazy. posting. Only post pictures with your ugly yeah. friends. That's that's common Jeez. sense. It's ruthless. Isn't that just common sense? I'm not going <laughs> to go out for a night on the town with bloody Chris Hemsworth and be like, me and Chris are out. <laughs> no, he's too good looking. I post- Mole people on the, the mole. <laughs> yeah, so there there is a few like the girls that'll have every single one is just a group yeah. photo, group photo, group photo. Can't and you tell go, which is which. Who the hell are you? Yeah, yeah. The one the tattoo you got a tattoo and it's on your arm, so you got to kind of put your arm up into your photo yeah. <laughs> like a trying to find something to uh to break the ice. Ask yeah. the question about the random tattoo you on look the arm, like a bit of a twit. The ones that don't answer the prompts to give you anything to ask questions of, they okay, just yeah. They're just miserable little. Why be on the app? And every <laughs> every single person, We've hit a personal strength. Every single person that's like, uh, <laughs> it's like the prompt will be like, convince me that dating apps are a good idea. Oh, you're a legend. Together, that's, together we can delete this app. Oh, oh my god! Man. Together we can come up with a good story of how we didn't meet on an app. Mm. How about it's 2023? Half the planet is meeting on apps. Get over it. Everyone's meeting on apps. There's, true, it's going to be true. weird if you didn't meet on an app. So, yeah, there's plenty of things like that. I, I would say, and I leverage this on my profile, mm. but apparently every guy, and you, you can correct me out there if I'm wrong, every guy's got 
a puppy pic. Every guy's got a shirtless gym selfie. Every guy's got really? a, a picture of him posing with a dead fish. Uh, or every guy's got a picture of him like in front of his car or just his car, not even him in front of his car. So guys- I don't think I have any of those. Guys aren't wow, immune from got, any yep. of this. Uh, I just got a new bouldering pic of me climbing oh, climbing the boulders. Like I got to add in there. I do have the dog picture. I do have the dog picture in there. Do, the, yeah. the funny you thing about mine up. is like he's a puppy- in the picture, but he's like, oh, a, he's, a, he's, he's a, a big full, menace now. <laughs> I've been on the apps for so long. He's he's turning ten soon. He's turning ten soon. Oh gosh, tricking him, tricking him. Well, there's a few other things that happened to me. I think it's kind of an interesting thing. There's there's three women who didn't believe I was actually the person that I am. She, they all thought it was a fake profile, which I was didn't know how to convince them otherwise. And you can't send a selfie on this app. So maybe it's a good strategy. It's like, I don't believe you're you meet up with me in person. Oh, yeah, that's actually a good point. There was 10 plus women that opened up with, I'm still upset about the 2018 prelim final. Oh <laughs> like, my God. That's not a good opener. It's the worst opener you could possibly have with me. Don't ever talk about footy with me off the bat. Um, and there was, there's so many things. One of the things that I'm a very cleanly person, right? And this was a no go for me was the selfie in the bedroom, right? Whatever. I'm okay with that. But the bedroom in the background being an absolute tornado has ripped through the bedroom. There's clothes everywhere and you're just the most disgusting human and it comes to cleaning this in your own bathroom. Or sorry, bedroom. It's like a car. If you get into a dirty car, the person is a dirty person. Yeah, right. Dirty profile, dirty person. Yeah. Speaking of dirty, if they're all bikini pics, right? Yeah. And there's one of them, you know, drinking a coffee or reading a book or something. Men, you got to like that one. It's a no-brainer. Don't like the one in the bikini. It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> like the one of them reading a the book. Do yourself a favor. Like the one of them reading the damn book. It's, <laughs> I don't know what. It's, it's so obvious. It's the book you want. That's my one tip, but I did. This is a little funny one. So we did put out a thing on socials to say, Hey, jump on. Leave us your dating stuff. <laughs> I did get a DM through our account. Love this. Uh, w unnamed. I'm going to go unnamed. Okay, what we got? Uh, she said, awkward moment, right? Awkward yeah. dating story. This one time, Mason Cox liked my photo on Hinge. I got really excited oh. and replied to him and he left me hanging. Mason, <laughs> let's chill. <laughs> <laughs> I responded, uh, this is going to be on geez. the pod for sure. Thanks for the ammo. <laughs> she said, you're welcome. To be precise, this was Monday. So I, because I'd been asking you, how's Hinge going? And you're like, ah, nah, I'm not even really touching it. I'm not even, I'm not even on it. I, I don't, I, do I even have it on my phone still? Uh, well, you got busted. Okay. She said, this was Monday. She, she, she's time stamped it. I should have got screenies. I should have got receipts. Oh, can we, I want I want the name so I can go back and find it. Just apologize because I'm sorry, Jane Doe, whoever you are. <laughs> well, now we know. Do you respond to any? Have you been on any hinge dates? I haven't been on any hinge dates now. Um, I have responded and talked to people on it. Um, like I said, some people don't believe it's actually me on there, I guess. But I have. There's some interesting people I've learned. I've learned. I keep my circle quite small. So whenever I get out to the open, you know, out to the paddocks of the uh, Australian public, I come to realize that there's some interesting people and people that spell their name with about six different Ys, Alicia. <laughs> And just shout out to Alicia. <laughs> shout out to Alicia. It just has a silent F or PH in there. Um, it's it's a it's a wild world. It's a wild world out there. It's been very very interesting. And I think I think for maybe one of the next episodes coming up, I'll, I'll dive into maybe another app and I'll give another kind of rundown of another app and my thoughts on what's going on. Yeah, in the endless pursuit for a sponsor. Yes. <laughs> uh, the yeah the one thing that I found with Hinge is oh you bet well. I don't know about you, but I bet above, oh. but never go on dates. Yeah, okay. Bumble, much more realistic, but just having Hinge, you're like, there's a little carrot there. A little carrot there, yeah. And then Tinder is just, oh, oof. There's, Tinder is just like girls looking for people to help them with their OnlyFans content. Oh my gosh. We're going to get real desperate for a sponsor if we're getting to that point. Uh, hey. <laughs> hey, Everyone's as we've talked about, everyone's got a price.
<laughs> Everyone has a price, Brayden. All right, that's All right. it. Wrap her up. Let's wrap it up, everyone. Thank you so much. That is the entertainment podcast of the Mason Cox Show. Follow us on all the socials. Respond to our voicemail. Seriously, it makes some of our days to be able to hear your voices and hear some of the terrible stories <laughs> everything that comes with it. Give us an idea of the best dating idea for a first date. That is the question for the group this week. Uh, check it out. We'll, we'll riff on it next week and we'll talk more about it. But thank you so much for listening. Check us out on all the platforms as always. And we will see you next week. Yeah.